Nagaland Baptist Church Pastors Union on Sunday holds 13th General Conference at Sanctum Baptist Church in Dimapur. Pastors Union stands with decisions taken by NBCC over NLTP Act. Security forces arrested two suspected minor cadres of NSC and IM from New Tinsukia Railway Station in Upper Assam on Sunday. Police seized two HK rifles, two IEDs, 283 rounds of live ammunition, three ATM cards and three mobile phones from the possession. BJP Minority Morcha Nagaland Organization Manki Bad Komorgam for Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday at Rotary Club in Dimapur in 11.30 a.m. PM Modi acknowledges Nagaland's agriculture in his Manki Bad and further speaks on export of Naga Chili to London. Joint Forum of Central Trade Unions give call for a nationwide strike on March 28 and 29 in protest against government policies affecting workers, farmers and people. Pramod Sawant will be sworn as Goa's Chief Minister for second time on Monday in presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and other dignitaries swearing in ceremony to be held at Dr. Siyama Prasad Mukherjee Stadium in Goa in 11 a.m. Hello viewers, I'm Rinki Gugoy and welcome to NLTV Primetime News. Let's see more of the news in details. The Nagaland Baptist Pastor Union on Sunday held the 13th General Conference at the Sanctum Baptist Church in Dimapur. NLTV team interviewed the pastors of the union over the opinions on the NLTP Act. The pastors of Chang Baptist Church Chumukidema said that people blame the church without proper knowledge. The pastors also said that it has given its consent over the amendment of the NLTP Act. However, decisions should be taken by properly considering all the angles. The pastors' union also added that the lives of the people are more important than business. It further maintained that liquor selling is not the only source of revenue in the state. The Pastors' Union further stated that it stands with the decisions taken by the NBCC over the NLTP Act. NLTP Act, of course, we all know pros and cons of that Act. And then, especially, Nagalin, when we consider, people just simply blame churches. Oh, we, we do admit that it is okay to blame churches, no problem, because the act was amended through churches, through NBCC. And then we as pastors union, we don't just simply consider from one perspective, but we want to talk more on all dimensions of life, from every aspect of life. Our consideration is not just simply on the matter of uh, this business, but we see the lives. We see individual life, individual family is more important than that very business. And NLDB is just a matter of uh, how we deal with it. Embassies is heading there, yeah, yeah. Leading, leading us, and then we are part of embassy family. We are not above embassies. So what we are going to do is we are endorsing that movement, as I said earlier. And another thing is we see it is important to look into our own Jewish members because it starts from our members. So when we really seriously take care of our Jewish members, we hope that our movement starts from there. The BJP Minority Morcha Nagaland organized a monkey bat program for Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday at the Rotary Club in Dimapur in 11.30 a.m. The program was graced by Nalin Kohli, BJP Nagaland in charge, Abhay Giri, BJP General Secretary of Nagaland and Manipur, Basu Damani, Vice President of BC BJP Nagaland, Benjamin Yaptomi, Vice President BJP Nagaland, 
Mahesh Kotecha, Treasurer, BJP Nagaland, Pintu Ghosh, Spokesperson, BJP Nagaland, and notably, the program was attended by the officials of Minority Morcha along with boot workers. It may be mentioned that PM Modi acknowledged Nagaland's agriculture in his Man Ki Baat and further spoke on the export of Naga chili to London. मेरे प्यारे देशवासियों नमस्कार बीते सप्ताह हमने एक ऐसी उपलब्धि हासिल की जिसने हम सबको गर्व से भर दिया आपने सुना होगा कि भारत ने पिछले सप्ताह 400 बिलियन डॉलर यानी 30 लाख करोड़ रुपए के एक्सपोर्ट का टारगेट हासिल किया है पहली बार सुनने में लगता है कि ये अर्थव्यवस्था से जुड़ी बात है लेकिन ये अर्थव्यवस्था से भी ज्यादा भारत के सामर्थ्य भारत के पोटेंशियल से जुड़ी बात है एक समय में भारत से एक्सपोर्ट का आंकड़ा कभी 100 बिलियन कभी 150 बिलियन कभी 200 बिलियन तक हुआ करता था अब आज भारत 400 billion dollars. In another development, the security forces arrested two suspected minor cadres of NSC and IM from New Tinsukia railway station in Upper Assam on Sunday. The two HK rifles and two IEDs, twin 283 rounds of live ammunition, three ATM cards, and three mobile phones were seized from their possession. A joint operation was also launched by the police and army while acting on the specific informations and the two cadres were arrested from Tinsukia Railway Police Station. The police said that during the questioning, the cadres confessed that their involvement with NSC and IM and they led security forces to a house at Pangsum village under Namtok Circle in Arunachal's Changlang district from where weapons were recovered. The police further added that the NSCN cadres were involved in many extortion activities in Arunachal Pradesh. Furthermore, it was also learned that the minor cadres were recruited to NSCN for extortion purposes. On the other hand, the Longding Battalion of the Assam Rifles along with the Longding Police apprehended two operatives of the NSCN IM from the jungle between Nogjan and Jedua village of Arunachal's Longding district on Saturday. The oldest MLA in India, Kejong Chang, is still going strong at the age of 87. Chang is serving at the Twensang Sadar II Assembly constituency of Nagaland. Chang has been elected multiple times and won from the Twensang Sadar II constituency at least three times in a row from the Naga People's Front. Meanwhile, Kuzoluzo Azon Nino, the MLA from 19 PAG constituency in Nagaland, in a tweet said that the budget session ends and he recollects his days as an opposition member in the 13th House, having spent five years sitting with Baba Kejong Chang. Azo further tweeted, God bless him with long life. Many politicians in Nagaland look up to Chang, who is also referred to as Baba as he is the most elderly member in the assembly as well as one of the oldest politicians in the state. The opening ceremony of the second soccer tournament 2022 was held on Sunday at the DDSC Stadium in Dimapur with President of Dimapur Football Association, Mukato Aye as a special guest and social worker Kekawo Awomi as the guest of honour. Notably, the tournament is being organised by Jafu Market Area, whereby 12 teams are participating in the Dimapur Youth Knockout Football Tournament. Furthermore, special invitees like Working President of Muslim Council Dimapur, Ahidur Rahman, and President of Hazi Park Business Welfare Committee, Piwoto Aye, also attended the event. Football knockout football tournament is Dimapur Muslim Youth ka taraf se kar rahe, organized by Jafu Market. In this team, there are 12 teams 
पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं कोहिमा चुमुक डीमा चारमाल और डिमापुर का सब टीम है तो ये कमेटी की तरफ से जितना टीम ने पार्टिसिपेट किया है सबको हम लोग तरफ से बहुत शुक्रिया अदा कर रहा हूँ और जितना ऑडियंस है सबको भी कमेटी का तरफ से बहुत शुक्रिया है और ख़ास करके हम लोग का जो हमारा जो गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर है सार का बहुत शुक्रगुजार है कि सार ने कीमती वक्त निकाल के हम लोग का इस प्रोग्राम को एक प्रोग्राम को अंजाम देने के लिए आ रहा है और दूसरा मैं शुक्रगुजार हूँ डिमापुर फुटबॉल एसोसिएशन का प्रेसिडेंट सार मुगातो का सार का बहुत सपोर्ट है और साहब हार की बहुत सपोर्ट की वजह से आज हम लोग इस मौज को सही तरीका से अंजाम दे पा रहा हूँ और डिमापुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट फुटबॉल लेफ्ट का लेफ्ट का जो प्रेसिडेंट है प्रेसिडेंट का शुक्रगुजार है कि उन्होंने उनका जो लेफ्ट का जो टीम है पूरा टीम हम लोग को सपोर्ट कर रहा है और इस टूर्नामेंट का आज फर्स्ट राउंड होगा और कल सेकेंड राउंड होगा यानी मंडे को मंडे नाइट एट थर्टी में फाइनल जैसा हो जाएगा तो जिमापुर जितना फुटबॉल प्रेमी है डिमापुर है मैं सबको दावत दे रहा हूँ कि आल हम लोग का मैच को देखने के लिए आए ये फुटबॉल Take a note the Lions Club of Dimapur will be organizing a free eye screening camp for Lionistic Gear 2021 to 2022 for IOL surgery cataract in association with Jorhat Lions Eye Hospital on April 2 and 3. The operation for IOL surgery will be conducted at Jorhat Lions Eye Hospital sponsored by Lions Club of Dimapur. The medical team will come from Jorhat Lions Eye Hospital and the patients would be provided with free medicines and advice. Lions Club of Dimapur added by saying that all the patients must wear face masks and all the time strictly follow the SOPs as per the government guidelines. LCD furthermore stated that patients one can fill for online forms and submit themselves for the screening at the following places namely Lions Health Center Midland 98628-28240 in their automobiles of Posit the Reliance Trends 94360-63035, Shital Sari near Durga Mandir 94360-03532, Mahabir Printing Press Dhobi Nala 94360-07399, Road Rider Tires opposite Mayur Hotel 94360-02423. The BJP Minority Morcha Nagaland organized the Man Ki Baat program of Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday at Rotary Club in Dimapur in 11:30 a.m. The program was graced by Nalin Kohli, BJP Nagaland in charge, Abhay Giri, BJP General Secretary of Nagaland and Manipur, Basu Damani, Vice President of BJP Nagaland. Benjamin Yaptomi Vice President BJP Nagaland Mahesh Kotecha Treasurer BJP Nagaland Pintu Ghosh Spokesperson BJP Nagaland Notably the program was attended by the officials of Minority Morcha along with boot workers It may be mentioned that Prime Minister Narendra Modi acknowledged Nagaland's agriculture in his Man Ki Baat and further spoke on the export of Naga chili to London So Once a month our honorable prime minister Narendra Modi ji has been for several years now on the last sunday addressing the nation with non political topics per se about what is the progress that ordinary indians are doing across the nation aur isi silsile mein aaj dimapur mein man ki baat ke is shrinkhla mein hum sab jude it is a practice that we sit at our booth level and we listen to it collectively and that's how we spread message about the good things being done across the country so that people can learn today in fact nagaland also featured in man ki baat when he was talking about agricultural exports from different parts of the country he mentioned the naga chili which has been also exported to london so every part of the country somewhere or the other in some way some personalities are discussed and they are inspirational talks that we participate in Every political party is entitled to want to raise issues that it wishes to. That's the beauty of uh, Indian democracy, which is as vibrant in Nagaland as anywhere else. Obviously, our coalition government is going to go to the people with its report card, 
and the people of Nagaland will finally exercise their franchise on our report card. Individual parties may have their points of view and I'm sure our state spokespersons, whether in the alliance partners or in the BJP, will duly respond to specific queries. I think it is heartening to note that in today's Man Ki Baat, the Honorable Prime Minister referred to the export of agricultural products from different parts of the country and specifically about uh, the Naga Chili across the country to London. Nagaland is an important state for all of us and uh, this is I think only the beginning of more and more positive stories of development and uh, other positive th positivity coming out before the rest of the country about how Nagaland is also keeping pace and how Nagaland features in terms of such uh, initiatives by the private people and also Go Live of Enterprise Resource Planning Project under IPDS Department of Power was inaugurated by Principal Secretary Power K.D. Vizo on Friday at the ENC Conference Hall, Kohima. Vizo, while addressing the gathering, said that the ERP system tied together a multitude of business processes and enabled the flow of data between them and collect and organizations shared transactional data from multiple sources and eliminate data duplication and provide data integrity with a single source of truth. He further said that implementation of the ERP will bring transparency, efficiency and accountability to the departments. The Ministry of Defence announces new signing schools in three northeastern states, namely Nagaland, Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. The Ministry of Defence stated that it has provided an approved setting up of 21 new signing schools in partnership with NGOs, private schools and state government. MOD further stated that these schools will be set up after government's initiative of setting up 100 new signing schools across the country, which is to help to provide quality education to students and to give them better career opportunities, including joining the armed forces. The Henue Trap National Liberation Council on Sunday announced the appointment of Sadon K. Bla as its representative to take forward the proposed peace talks. Sain Kupar Nongtrao, General Secretary of HNLC, issued a statement on Sunday evening and announced that the President of Hanue Trap National Youth Front, Sadon K. Bla, will be the representative of the organization. Notably, the Meghalaya government on March 10 had appointed retired IAS officer Peter S. Dakar and A.K. Mishra, advisor of MHA, as the two interlocutors for the proposed peace talks with HNLC. Sain Kupar Nongtrao said that HNYF President Sadon Kebla will be in touch with the two interlocutors to pursue the peace talks. A woman has been arrested with rupees 11,500 and fake Indian currency notes on Saturday. The arrest was made by the ISOL Border Security Force along with the Special Narcotics Police. According to the Special Narcotics Police, the woman had rupees 11. 35,600 FICN in the domination denominations of rupees 500, 200, and 100. Further investigation into the case is underway.
Manipur Chief Minister and Biren Singh hit out at former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister and People's Democratic Party Chief Mehbooba Mufti on Sunday after she advocated talks with Pakistan over the Kashmir issue. Mehbooba Mufti had earlier stated that to ensure peace in Kashmir, India must engage in dialogue with Pakistan over the Kashmir issue and resolve it. Responding to Mahbuba Mufti's statement, Manipur Chief Minister Biren Singh has hit out at the former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister saying that India does not need to discuss its internal matters with Pakistan. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while addressing the nation on the 87th episode of his monthly radio program on Sunday, said India is taking massive steps towards economic progress. The Prime Minister began his address by congratulating the people of India for a momentous feat. Notably, the Prime Minister stated that India achieved a target of rupees 400 billion exports and stressed on the need for exporting India's ex products to newer markets and different corners of the world. He said there was a time when the figure of exports from India used to be 100 billion, at times 150 billion, sometimes 200 billion. Adding that India has achieved the target of 400 billion dollar exports that signifies India's capabilities and potential. Modi further added that small entrepreneurs playing a major role in the government procurement. He further pointed out that India is blessed with many cultures, languages and foods. Diversity is something that unites India. Modi said that Jal Mandir scheme played a significant role in the protection of the wells of step wells which helped a lot in raising the water level in the water shortage areas. Furthermore, the PM said that children had made Swachita campaign a success and now they must come forward and become water warriors to work towards conservation of water. The Prime Minister also paid tribute to Savitribai Pule. Namaskar. Bite Sapta Hamne Ek Aisi Uplabdi Hasil Ki. जिसने हम सब को गर्व से भर दिया आपने सुना होगा कि भारत ने पिछले सप्ताह 400 बिलियन डॉलर यानी 30 लाख करोड़ रुपए के एक्सपोर्ट का टारगेट हासिल किया है पहली बार सुनने में लगता है कि यह अर्थव्यवस्था से जुड़ी बात है लेकिन यह अर्थ व्यवस्था से भी ज्यादा भारत के सामर्थ्य भारत के पोटेंशियल से जुड़ी बात है एक समय में भारत से एक्सपोर्ट का आंकड़ा कभी 100 बिलियन कभी 150 बिलियन कभी 200 बिलियन तक हुआ करता था अब आज भारत 400 बिलियन डॉलर पर पहुंच गया है मेरे प्यारे देशवासी a joint forum of central trade unions has been given a call for a nationwide strike on March 28 and 29 in protest against the government policies affecting workers, farmers and people. Earlier, the joint platform of central trade unions held a meeting in Delhi on March 22 to take the stocks of the preparations in various states and sectors for the proposed two-day All India strike on 28 and 29 March 2022 against the anti-worker, anti-farmer, anti-people and anti-national policies of the central government. Notably, the meeting took note of the fact that emboldened by the results of the recently held state elections, the BJP government at the centre has intensified the attacks on the working people, reducing the interest rate on EPF accumulations to 8.1% from 8.5%, sudden hike in petrol, LPG, kerosene, CNG and many more. Furthermore, the meeting appealed to various unions at state levels to join the strike to oppose the anti-labor policies of the central government. 
The four labor codes being its a glaring example, it may be mentioned that the central trade unions which are part of this joint forum are INTUC, AITUC, HMS, CITU, AIUTUC, TUCC, SEWA, AICTU, LPF and UTUC. Pramod Sawant will be sworn as Goa's Chief Minister for the second term on Monday in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and other dignitaries. Notably, the swearing-in ceremony would be held at Dr. Siyama Prasad Mukherjee Stadium in Goa at 11 a.m. According to the officials, more than 10,000 people are likely to attend the event at the stadium and the swearing-in ceremony will also be broadcasted across the coastal state through various news channels. Union Minister Amit Shah inaugurated the Integrated Command and Control Center in Chandigarh at around 11.35 a.m. on 27 March 2022, under which around 2,000 CCTV cameras have been installed. The ICCC has been integrated with major citizen services such as water, electricity, sewage, etc. The inauguration ceremony was also attended by Punjab Governor and Chandigarh Administrator Banwari Lal Purohit. Shah, while speaking on the occasion, said that he is confident that Chandigarh in the days to come will become one of the most advanced cities of India and the world. He further stated that ICCC is a step that will not only make Chandigarh safe, but will also improve delivery of citizen-centric services. Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami on Sunday thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for extending the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana for another six months. Dhami also stated that around 80 crores, including 60 lakh people from Uttarakhand people, were benefited from PM's scheme. The government had in March 2020 announced the distribution of additional free of course food grains in the wake of the situation created by COVID-19 so that the vulnerable households do not suffer on account of non-availability of adequate food grains. The Union Cabinet on Saturday extended the PMGKAY scheme for another six months till September 2022 with each beneficiary eligible to get an additional 5 kilograms of free ration per month in addition to the normal quota of food grains under the NFSA. On a note, India sees fifth hike in fuel prices on Sunday, leading to an increase of rupees 3.70 and rupees 3.75 per litre, respectively, since Tuesday. Petrol and diesel, after the hike of 50 paise and 55 paise, respectively, in Delhi, are now being sold at rupees 99.11, 99.11 per litre and rupees 90.42 per litre today. In Mumbai, the prices of petrol and diesel were hiked by 53 paise and 58 paise respectively. Now the people in the finance capital will have to pay Rs 113.88 for petrol and Rs 98.13 for diesel. The revised rates of petrol and diesel in Chennai is Rs 104.90 and Rs 95.00, while in Kolkata, the price of petrol is Rs 108.53 and diesel is Rs 93.57. Notably, this is the fifth increase in fuel prices since ending a four-and-a-half-month pause on March 22. On all the four occasions, fuel prices were hiked by 80 paise per litre. 
expecting too much the inflation is going to go up not only, not not only the petrol prices is going up even the diesel prices is going up due to which all the common man is really affected like anything all the commodities are go, uh, the prices are going up uh, common man is to totally burdened out because of this thing government should do something about it are bhai pehle 500 rupaye petrol dalwate the the wo kam se kam 7 8 liter aa jata tha ab 500 rupaye ka le rahe hain to kitna aa raha hai 500 liter pura 5 liter bhi nahi aa raha petrol ka daam bahut badh chuka hai aur samanya logo ka salary to badh raha hai nahi ye sarkar jo hai ye mahangai ki sarkar hai garibon ki nahi hai abhi aap dekhte jaye to ye paas paas rajyon mein sarkar aayi उन्होंने क्या किया सरकार जैसे आने के पहले उन्होंने दस रुपया कम कर दिया दस रुपया कम करने जैसे इलेक्शन हो गया दस रुपया कैसे बढ़ गई फिर हाँ डेली बढ़ जा रहा क्या करेंगे क्या कैसा जीना बोलो जीने का बहुत मुश्किल After a summons was issued against the Shiva temple by the revenue officials, Shiva Linga from a temple in Raigarh district of Chhattisgarh was brought to the tehsil office to appear before the court and a fine of rupees 10000 was also imposed. On March 25, the villagers uprooted the Shiva Linga at Shiva temple in Raigarh and carried on a cart to present it in the court. However, the hearing was cancelled and the date of hearing was set for April 13. Moving on, the Ukrainian forces have reportedly recaptured the key strategic locations of Trostenets in the Sumy Oblast, Poltavka and Malinivka villages in Zaporizhia Oblast from the invading Russian forces. The Ukrainian forces launched Successful counter-offensives against the invading Russian troops in Zaporizhia Oblast in southeast Ukraine. The Ukrainian forces successfully ousted the Russian forces from the Poltavka and Malinivka villages in Zaporizhia Oblast after intense fighting. On the other hand, Trostanets, a city in Sumy Oblast in northeast Ukraine, was also liberated by Ukrainian forces. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has called for immediate supply of weapons from the West. The Ukrainian President, during his latest address, added that Ukraine is waiting too long for the required weapons. The Board of Control for Cricket in India President Surav Ganguly said that the BCCI is planning to start the women's IPL by 2023. The BCCI, which has been criticized in the past for not starting the women's IPL, BCCI said that they will need AGMS approval to kickstart the league next season. The board's plan to have five or six teams in the inaugural. Addition, after the IPL Governing Council meeting, BCCI President Saurav Ganguly said that the board's plan to start it by next year. Furthermore, IPL Chairman Brijesh Patel also made it clear that this season there will be four matches for the three women teams around men's IPL playoffs. India's women suffered a heartbreaking exit from the ongoing ICC Women's World Cup after South Africa women registered a three-wicket win in the last group game of the tournament in Hagley Oval. The loss meant India failed to qualify for the semi-finals as West Indies edged them in the points table by one point. India won the toss and chose to bat first. India posted a target of 274 runs with a loss of 7 wickets. Indian skipper Mitali Raj scored her 64th ODI 50. South African women started the innings brilliantly as Laura Wolvardert scored 80 of 79 runs. South Africa needing 7 runs of the last over and Deepthi Sharma kept things tight before claiming a wicket on a no ball resulting in a free hit. The South Africans made batters made full use of it won and won the match with a last ball. Mignon Dupris remained not out on 52 and played a crucial part in the run chase. Australia, South Africa, England, West Indies made the final four and will play the semis.
Medvedev dispatched Murray 6-4, 6-2 to reach the fourth round at the season's second ATP Masters 1000 event and take a 2-0 lead in the pair's ATP head-to-head -head series. Medvedev was the more aggressive player throughout, sending 24% of the time playing offense versus Murray's 18% and sealed the game in 1 hour and 30 minutes. The 13-time tour-level titleist will next play Spaniard Pedro Martinez. The 26-year-old climbed to world number one on 28 February before relinquishing it on Monday following the BNP Paribas Open at Indian Wells. In a new development, the recovery crews on Sunday found the second blocks, bo black box from the wreckage of a China Eastern Airlines Boeing 737-800 jet that crashed into a mountainside in southern China. The second black box could have found the cause of the crash. The other black box was the cockpit voice recorder which was found on Wednesday and has been sent to Beijing for examinations by experts. The flight MU5735 with 132 people on board was en route from the southwestern city of Kunming to Guangzhou on the coast on Monday when it plummeted from cruising altitude at about the time when it should have started its landing descent. According to officials, all of the people on board including nine crew members have been confirmed dead. The crash was the deadliest air disaster in mainland China since 1994. However, the cause of the China Eastern crash remains unknown. The ace Indian shuttler PV Sindhu clinched her second women's singles title of the season with a straight game win over Thailand's Busanan Ongbam Pang, but it's Pranoy, HS Pranoy went down fighting in the men's single final at the Swiss Open Super 300 Badminton Tournament in Basel on Sunday. Playing her second successive final in the tournament, Sindhu, a double Olympic medalist, took 49 minutes to get the better of the fourth seeded Busanan, 21-16, 21-8 at the St. Jacob Shell in Basel. Sindhu rode on her attack to open up a 3-0 lead, but Busanan started to stay in the rallies and produced some good quality shots to make it 7-7. For Sindhu, it was a moment of glory as she finally lifted the trophy after losing to Rio Olympics gold medalist Carolina Marin of Spain in the final of last edition. The 26-year-old from Hyderabad was happy to make memories of this venue and she had also claimed the World Championships gold in 2019. Thank you viewers, that's all from NLTV Primetime News. For more updates, keep watching Nagaland TV, Sobmanu Lagawas. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For the Mapro viewers, we are